Welcome back everyone. I'm Jason Jensen and in today's video we are back working on the large sci-fi diorama and more specifically I'm going to show you how I've been adding some rust to it. Well we have a lot to cover so let's get to it. So I'm going to start to paint the landing pads and what I did was I took an exacto knife and scored some lines in it to make it look like individual panels. I then took a sharp number two pencil and went over those lines. Um, and I'll adjust the camera so that you can see it better and actually see how I'm going to paint these. We're going to start with a wash of a metallic color. So I've created a wash with silver paint and water. Uh, it's mostly water. It's just uh, maybe I dip my brush twice into the paint and then stirred it into the water. So now we're just going to coat this with our wash. This is just to give it a metallic look. Now, while it's still damp, I'm going to take some silver paint. And what I'm doing is I am twisting the brush so I'm not constantly brushing in the same direction. So it's all different directions, kind of randomly, um, sticking mostly to the middle of the panel. Okay, it's completely dry and it has a metallic look to it. I don't know if you can see it on camera. Uh, let me turn on the, the light and you can see it better maybe. I don't know if that helps, but it definitely has a, a metallic sheen to it. Okay, now we're gonna start to add our rust. We have light rust, medium rust, dark rust, and old rust. And all of these can be bought through ammo in a set. You can buy an entire rust set. So we have our paint tray, a paper towel, and a sponge. Now we're gonna work on each panel individually. So as we're working on the panel, we're going to cover the panels next to it. So you'll see now I'm going to work on this panel here. Uh, we'll start with light rust first. We'll do the light rust on here. Move our paper. Do light rust on here. So we'll do each panel with light rust. Then we'll move to medium rust and dark rust and then old rust. So this is what it looks like so far. So I started with light rust, then used medium rust, and then dark rust. And to be honest, most of it is the medium rust. All right, All right, now we'll move on to uh, the darkest one, which is old rust. You always want to shake your paint really well. And what's nice is these have a small metal ball inside them. Now you may wonder why I'm not using uh, painter's tape to mask off each square. I don't want to risk pulling up a thin layer of the mat board or if the layer that I just put down is still maybe a little bit sticky. Um, when the paint's on it, it could damage it. It could pull it up and leave some white of the paper. So that's why I do it this way. Well, as you can see, I've done a bunch of the old rust. Now, I'm going to add a little bit of water 
to uh, the old rust and I'm going to do a wash over some of the individual panels. And I'm actually going to use my uh, wash that has the silver in it. Now I'm going to use Desert Turquoise. So you can see, not much. And again, using the silver wash. Now I'm just using some sticks of pastel chalk and I'm just rubbing my finger over it and then very lightly just rubbing over it giving it sort of a patina look. And maybe on the lighter ones, we'll do a little bit of white. Okay, so we're going to add some rust to these. And the first thing I did was I lightly did some dry brushing of a light gray. This is called sand gray and an off white just to give it a little bit of texture. I don't even know if it's showing up on camera, but uh, it just made it look... Um, like I said, just gave it some texture so it's not so flat. Now, we'll start by adding some rust and we'll work light to dark. So I'm gonna work with, uh, we'll start with ochre. Now we'll use some pigments, light rust. Uh, it's a soft brush, but it's very, very small. I took it over to the diorama quick and uh, put it up where it fits in place and I felt that it was a little too red at the top. So I simply just took my eraser and went over it. And uh, it actually took away some of the pigment. So it's not as red anymore. <laughs> okay, for the last step, I used um, light rust and mixed a little bit of yellow with it. That's this color right here. Added a lot of water. So there's very little paint in here. It's mostly water. And then just lightly sort of drag my brush down to give it sort of a, a rust wash. Using the same technique that I did on these, I went ahead and painted this wall. Now I have doors to paint. The doors will end up looking more like this. Um, then I have another wall section to paint. That goes there. Um, I also painted these because above here on the diorama there is a a walkway and 
I have all these shapes that will get glued on here to support that walkway. So I've got my walls all glued in place. And as you can see, I've even added some wires hanging. I still have to add uh, a cover to this area. Maybe um, cut a straw in half or cut a piece of mat board and make it look like metal. Um, I added some straws here. So I've been working on the lower section. And I painted it flat black. And then painted the parts a blue color. Now all this gets heavily weathered. So I want it to look just like this. Because the diorama that I'm building now will be connected to this one right here. So again, all of this gets heavily weathered, just like the diorama I just showed you. And uh, let me take a minute and show you how the two dioramas connect to each other. So here is a drawing of the room that the uh, dioramas will be going in. Um, it is 13 feet by... 15 feet Now there's a simple track plan and again, this is going to be G scale I'm using O scale track uh, But the equipment is G scale um, I drew the couch a little oversized. It doesn't stick out quite that far It's definitely that long uh, But it's maybe back back here so the current diorama that we're working on is right here so there's a wall here and there's a wall here uh, there's a door here that goes into a bathroom right here so it sits here and then our first diorama sits right here now the bench work is three feet off the ground. Then, on the area that has the track, there's dioramas that are a foot tall. And then, the track goes on top of that. So the track is actually four feet off of the ground. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Let me show you... A drawing of uh, the current diorama so here's the current diorama and then this is the first one and then I'll build one that has to be 20 inches wide that, that connects the two together hopefully that's showing up oh, um, it might be kind of light And then we'll build up from that. So on top, the next set of dioramas will have the track work on it.
So I just made a wash using dark rust and old rust and a lot of water. Now I just added some black to my wash. It's nice because it has sort of a brownish color to it which would represent like Greece. Now we are using dark rust. So here's everything glued in place and let me show you what I used. Uh, I've got some bottle caps that I used, hair rollers from the dollar store, shoelaces for the hoses, just some cord for the wire, and then this uh, flex tubing and I'll also be adding the uh, wire hanging down here and some of the uh, shoelace so we have a lot more detail to put in here yet Well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I do apologize if there was a little bit of static in the video. I did not have my microphone adjusted properly through parts of it, so sorry about that. Um, I am just so excited about this project. And like I mentioned in the video, uh, this is going to be part of a G scale layout. Um, and I'm so excited that I have half of the bench work completed on the other half of my basement for this. Uh, and again, the bench work is three feet off the floor and then the dioramas will be stacked on top of it. And the ceiling in my basement is eight feet. So um, we'll have five feet of dioramas stacked on top of the bench work. Um, and the bench work, because there's so much stacked on it, um, I'm having to build it very sturdy. Um, it's two by fours. Um, you'll see in the upcoming video, there's a, there's shelving under it. Uh, it's very nice and very finished looking. So uh, very exciting. I cannot wait to get some G scale trains running. Uh, the G-scale trains will be very futuristic, uh, almost kind of steampunk looking. So um, some exciting videos coming up. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, stay motivated and happy modeling, everyone.